morning, everyone. How you doing? It's Friday, May 1st. Yes, we've gone all through April and now we're into May. Can, woo, I, I think I can keep that straight, May. So we have a lot to cover today, a whole bunch. So let me just start with a couple little um, edifications, I guess you could say. On Wednesday, I talked about the blue angels flying over um, hospitals and things like that in support of our medical workers. <clears throat> well, I didn't see that the Thunderbirds were involved too. And so for that branch of the mil military, I apologize. My dad was Navy, so I guess my head just went to Navy. So <clears throat> thank you Thunderbirds and blue angels for what you have done. The other thing that I saw on the internet that I thought was really, really great <clears throat> was that, you know, your doctors and nurses are all just gowned up and, and, and you don't really know who's in there. Well, look at what these guys are doing. Okay, so how brilliant is that? That's a picture of their faces that's on, the, um, on their front. I think that's just absolutely fabulous. I talked to my girlfriend last night, who's a speech pathologist. Uh, we were in college together, BFFs, Debbie Olverding, and I was talking to her about it, and they've never been busier, and on and on, and kind of a funny story, but not so funny. She was at 7-Eleven, and some Yahoo was in front of her, talking all tough, and blah, what's this all about, blah, 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 and here she is in her medical garb with her name badge, and she took him down, man, she, with verbally. It just, she goes, excuse me, sir, and then took care of business, you know, because she's on the front lines. And then as, then he walked out of the store, and then Debbie's going, oh, I hope he doesn't have a gun. I'm not going to get, I got to get into my car, yada, yada. And um, she went outside, and he apologized to her. So, yep, sometimes we just need a little, a little correction. And then this morning, I found this on Facebook. I thought this was freaking hilarious. Uh-oh. Someone's trying to call you, John. Okay, there. Thank you. I thought this was hilarious. Um, obviously, a guy took it because he said hair coloring. No, sir. That's how to get really beautiful curls. So, yes, we are becoming very, very ingenious. So, we have a little bit of a situation here that I need to talk about. Yes, we're going to start this wonderful quilt on Monday, and today we're going to talk about fabric selection. This is a pattern that you could order from thequiltshow.com and patterns went out and this happened. Yes, that happened. We sent you guys a proto, the prototype one, the one that was not corrected. So you're gonna watch a classic Alex Anderson right now, classic, as she passes the buck. Watch this. I'm going to call Kristen. <laughs> you know, guys are doing the best we can. Let's call Kristen and see how they have decided to resolve this. I'm going to put her on speaker. This is kind of like an ambush we're doing right now. Did I shave today? Yeah, just kidding. <laughs> Kristen. Oh, great. Now she's not answering me. This is fabulous. Okay. Come on, Kristen. Well, the person at extension <laughs> 1002 is not available. Record your message at the tone. John just said, Do I have the right phone number? Okay, let's try again. It's her mobile. Okay, what is it? Oh, hold on. Well, you know what? I know I can't, Kristen, call me. Because <laughs> we are going to take care of you guys. We are. We're going to get this mess. She's watching you. <laughs> She's supposed to pick up the phone. Let me try again. Oh, wouldn't you just love to work with me? No, you go hang yourself is what you do. Okay. Reasons. I did tell her I was going to call it uh, 1010. So let me answer one more question. Uh, somebody wrote and asked me, what needles do I use? My go-to needle is a top stitch 80. I, do I have other needles? Of course I do, but that's kind of my universal go-to. Yeah, John? Do you want me to get her on the phone? No, I just tried to call her, but okay. I called her too early. It's okay, it's okay. Don't touch us. Okay. <laughs> Don't touch us. <this. laughs> 
<laughs> so that let's get start we will solve this pattern problem okay um let's get started on fabric selection many of you know that we blew out of these like unbelievably fast and then i put up other bundles that you might be able to play with from our store but certainly, I will bet you 99.9 .9 of you have a beautiful stash that you can draw from. So I think this is going to be really fun to do because there's different blocks in here. Uh, there's 10 blocks is what I counted, but it's me. So maybe it's nine, maybe it's 11. I have a lot of stars in it. I love the little, the little house. Where did my little house go? I mean, it's so cute. And honestly, in the middle, you could do whatever you wanted. This is a really great quilt. It's easy. I got all of the blocks from the quick and easy block tool. They're all six inches. Um, but let's talk about fabric in case you choose to work from your existing stash. And there's nothing like playing with your stash. All right. Well, first of all, there are three things I want you guys. Let's try her one more time. I can't stand it. I'm, a, I'm not going to be able to concentrate. She said, that's fine. <laughs> okay, she's back. Now I'm hoping I'm calling the right number. Here we go. Ambush again. Ambush. 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 Yeah, I delivered two things in person in Livermore yesterday. At Rondi, I took uh, the Mackinac over to her house and then rulers to someone that lives around the corner. I must be calling the wrong number. Hey, Kristen, call me. I'm gonna tell her to call me. Let's try that. Okay, call me. Okay, boy, this is called like another, this is like, where'd my, where'd my cuss thing go? <laughs> no, we're not going crazy. All right, so when I work with my fabric, I, there's three things I primarily keep in mind. And mind you, this is my general rule of working with fabric and playing with fabric. I took a class from Kay Facet and I realized that he works exactly opposite and who's to argue with Kay with the beautiful quilts he makes. But when we're doing something like this, this is what I want you to think about, okay? So let's go down here and take a look. The first thing you want to be aware of is you want light, medium and darks if you don't have an array of light medium and darks it's going to fall flat so <clears throat> the problem is is like if i'm looking at this fabric here it's a fairly boring fabric and i really don't want to spend money on it when i could be spending money say on this one this one gets me all excited but look at this you guys if you don't have light medium dark look what happens it goes completely flat so well, again, we might not want to spend money on lights. Um, you need them in your collection. So let me tell you something else. When fabric is designed, basically, you we know you're going to buy the mediums because those are the ones that jump out at you. The lights, not so much. The darks, not so much. So what happens is, is when the fabric is being designed guess what they want to make money okay so you're going to have this much available again at your quilt store maybe this much of lights that much of darks always buy lights because they are not that readily available and i know it's painful when you could have something else and you only have x amount of money you can spend but that's the truth of it for something like this quilt light medium and dark is super oh there she is there she is she got my message Hey, Kristen, I got you on speakerphone in front of the world. Hi, Alex. Hi. So, hi, everybody. And I want to tell you what happened with the Sequoia sampler patterns. That is that I messed up. And I'm so sorry. I used the wrong file version when I sent the pattern to the printer and when I made the PDF for the downloadable pattern. So that means that the pattern that you receive may have a few minor errors and it may be missing the instructions for the school block. Just, just small things, you guys, no big deal. <laughs> minor little things. Again, I'm so sorry. So if you ordered a pattern on or after April 24th, either a printed pattern or a downloadable version, and whether you purchased it by itself or if it came free with a bundle, 
may need an updated one. And the easiest way to tell if you have a pattern that needs to be updated is just to look and see what's on the last two pages. If your two pages don't have the spool block pattern on them, then you're going to need a new one. So here's how we're going to take care of getting everybody a new pattern. <laughs> if you received a printed pattern, we're just going to send you a new one in the mail. And um, so you'll be good to go with a hard copy, but we know that's going to take a few days to get to you. So we're also going to send you an email with a link to a downloadable version. And I know not everybody has a printer, but at least you'll have something you can look at on your screen. If you want to compare that to your printed version, whatever, you'll have that just to tie you over till your new printed copy arrives. And if you purchased a downloadable copy, you will also receive an email with a download link to a new, new version and you can, or you can simply um, return to your original download. If you have that, it, your original email that you got right after you purchased your pattern and the download link in that email will also take you to a new version of the original pattern that you downloaded. So the upshot of it all is if you got a printed pattern in the mail, we're going to send you a new one and we're going to send you a download link to one to tie you over. And if you got a downloadable copy, we're going to send you a new link to download it, or you could go back to your original link in the email that you got right after you purchased the pattern and you can download, download a new one. So once again, I'm so sorry. Okay. But, but here you guys, I want you guys to just all give her a hand and I know she can hear it. <laughs> Honestly, thank you so much, Kristen. Now John's coming in for the party. Oh, uh, well, thank you. And I hope everybody has a great time making the quilt. Everybody, please put pictures up. I want to see the quilt and all the different fabrics. I'm really excited to see what they look like. Perfect. Well, Kristen, thank you so much. And, and the downloads are right now, John. They're correct. So if they go to the store. Yes. 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 Go. Correct. Everything's good. Everything's good. Okay. <laughs> Everything's good. Is it five o'clock? <laughs> yes, yes. Hey, Kristen, okay. thank you so thanks. much. I appreciate it. Thanks, Alex. Okay. Bye. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Thank you, you too. Bye. Bye. So we got your, we got your guys' back. So it'll all be taken care of. And if you want to go print out the pattern on the site, like you haven't purchased it yet, it is the correct version. And this is, ah, this is what we're working on starting next week is the Sequoia Sampler. Okay, so we talked about the importance of light, medium, dark, especially in the case of a quilt like this. Then the other thing is that every year there are um, colors that are in vogue, meaning, let's talk about green. Uh, right now it might be lime green. Maybe these are from about 10 years ago. They were, oh, well, you know, wouldn't that be nice if you could see for crying out loud? Um, here we go. These are all, these are kind of the Kelly greens and, but not, right now lime green is in. Okay, this is fine, but look at how much more interesting it is with all the different greens in it. But I've also, I'm messing with you a little bit too, because I've also put in lights. It would not be this wonderful if it did not have the lights in it. But look, like this can play next to this, no worries. There, it's, it's just that much more fun. The more the merrier in my book. And the next is size and scale of print. I like to use fabric that has varying size and scale of print. And I believe if you guys bought any of the bundles from us, the Mackinac, the, um, this one, the other ones, I can't think of the names off the top of my head, they have, they have a pretty good array of prints. So look how much more interesting this one is than this one. I mean, this is a giraffe neck for Pete's sakes. You never know how it's gonna cut up. Here's um, a fish behind right there. Cherries. I think this was a train. I don't know. Don't judge the bolt of fabric or the fabric by the bolt. Judge your fabric by this much because that's what you're going to be doing. You're going to be cutting it up. So basically, you have, you have light, medium, dark. Here we go. Here, light, medium, dark. Okay. You have mix up those color families. It's a lot more fun. And then vary your size and scale of print. So those are my three standard rules that I go to. Okay. The easiest way to work is to maybe choose a holiday. So let's take a look at this holiday here. Fourth of July. This is pretty much all patriotic prints and the Mackinac bundle <clears throat> is red, white, and blue too. 
to not have this issue. But a lot of times when I used to teach in the olden days, people would want to do a red, white, and blue star quilt. Of course they do. So they would come in with all of these star prints. Everybody can't be a leader. You have to have some followers. So with that, I think, while there's nothing wrong with this, I think this is a much more interesting and sophisticated piece than this one. I think you probably would agree with that. So once, if you go with a holiday, maybe you might pick out one or two, you know, red, white, and bluey prints, but then go to your blue bundles, go to your white area. Oh, that's a star. There you go. Polka dots. Here's a little sailor boy, which is adorable. It's here for the blue angels. And so this is a really easy way to work and your results will always be wonderful. Um, no, Bob, this is not a free pattern. Uh, it is a, and a quilt along thing. Um, no, Bob, this is something, the pattern we sell in the store is $14.95 and, um, but the whole quilt along stuff is free for everybody. Okay, the net, oh, here's another one. Here is Christmas. And it doesn't have Santa Claus in every single block. It's It's got a plaid, it's got a polka dot, which I happen to love. And here we go. Okay, so the next thing is what I would say is get yourself a focus fabric. This is getting a little more sophisticated. These are two fabrics that are very old and somebody might consider them as focus fabrics, I think they're rather mundane. There's really not that many color variations in this or in this. I mean, basically you've got the one, two, three kind of purples, the green in the background, that's it. I would have loved this if the fabric had been more varied with different colors or different variations of the blue family. So these two pieces are or this piece here, let me see, what do I have? I don't wanna blow the surprise. These are two pieces that I would give bees to for focus fabric. There's more, there's more going on in this than in this by a long shot. And there's more going on in this than in this by a long shot. If I had to pick one of these, oh, well, actually I've made quilts out of both of them. This one I chose is my focus fabric because I did not have a lot of teals or pinks or purples in my collection. So I, when I went to the quilt store, I bought fabrics that were in this piece, whether I liked the fabrics or not. This would make a wonderful autumn quilt. And any of these would be beautiful with this pattern So that we're doing. So here is this. Yikes, what in the world are those two fabrics doing together? Somebody should call the police, okay? Do I have any cardinal bird quilt pattern because my great grandma and I just passed away and I wanna make a quilt? No, I don't have any cardinal. Go Google that, uh, cardinal uh, birds. I don't have any patterns like that. Okay, so here's this, and I gotta stop looking at questions because I get really, ugh. So this came about not because of this, but it would work with this because you've got the pinks, you've got the, the golds, you've got the blacks. This is a B plus, B plus. It's not in this one. It's not an A plus, you guys. So what is an A plus? This fabric is an A plus. Love this fabric and I'll tell you why. First of all, I would have never for a million years thought to put pink in, although this designer did. I mean, basically, this is a hybrid of this if you want to get down to it as far as colors go. But I love in it because like in the green area, there's two different greens. It's not just one green. And again, the pink, I would have never thought to use, okay? So how much of this do I buy, let's say generally for a quilt? I will buy enough for a border. So basically my quilts are never more than 72 inches. So I would get 72 inches in length and then throw in another 12 inches for good measure or maybe even another half yard for good measure. If you don't use it on the quilt top, it's okay. You can use it on the back. This becomes your guide, all right? That This piece here happened because this piece here happened because of this. I would have never in a million years chosen these fabrics, ever. So as you look through your stash, look for a large scale print 
that has as many different color var variations in it that you possibly can get and then have at it. We are gonna go a few minutes long today. Oh, then look at this. Now this is really interesting to me. So this is an older piece. This is a newer piece. And basically it's the same color manipulations, only the newer colors have been introduced to it. Okay, I got to tell you about this, you guys. There are color gods out there. Mm -hmm, they are. They are. They are trying to decide, or they are determining what we're going to buy. They want you unhappy with what you have, right? So that you go and buy new stuff. And this is in clothing, home deck, in everything, dishes, everything, colors come and go in style. So th what we're looking at here is something that was older and older, and then it got updated with newer. And it's okay to use it all in the same quilt. In fact, I think it's more fabulous if you do use the old stuff and the new stuff. Now, when you're working with a focus fabric, you wanna be careful. When you look at this, I don't know if this is light, I don't know if this is dark, okay? I don't know what it is because it doesn't know what it is either. So don't try and force this into any block. It may not work for you. Back in the day, I was commissioned to do quilts for a book and um, the Michael Kyle, the late Michael Kyle wanted a print similar to this to be in the background. So I started making stars. Imagine that. I started making stars. Here we go. And it just got uglier and uglier and uglier. And you know what, uh, Rhonda, you might remember this. I took these blocks into the cotton patch and I said, Carolee, tell me what to do. Or no, she wasn't there. Everybody just looked at it in horror, okay? Because it's a commission piece by somebody who is just amazing. So the other thing, so I went, oh my gosh. And that's when I realized this didn't know if it was light or dark. So no matter who I put against it, it wasn't gonna play nicely. It wasn't until I put it on black that it all started to come together. I tried to force one of these colors, one of the uh, focus fabric colors into one of the stars in the quilt and it was ridiculous. So if it's not working, it's not working. Um, just move on. So what's great when you clean your stuff is you find fabrics that maybe you forgot you bought. Look at this beautiful fabric. Wow. And you know the crazy thing, you guys? I used to be afraid of working in autumn colors. And I look at all of these, and what are they? Autumn colors. Now autumn's starting to be one of my favorite seasons. So if you have a palette that you're not that comfortable with, you might want to, at some point, consider working in that color palette. I wouldn't suggest it on this quilt because this is just supposed to be fun, no-brainer. So this uh, monochromatic, working in one color family, the hard thing with monoch monochromatic is that you're only working with one color family and it can get boring really, really fast. The good news is you're only working in one color family. The thing you wanna do when you're doing monochromatic is you must make sure the um, um, you have white in it. If you don't have white in it, it's going to go flat. Let me just go like this. Look, at, I'm gonna go like this, and then I'm gonna go like this. You need white. Here's white in the blue one. Let me take that away, that away and then add it in. This gets back to that light, medium, and dark. And when I say you add white into it, it doesn't have to be solid white fabric. This is white even though it's a plaid. So monochromatic is fun. The problem with monochromatic is by the time it's over, you're gonna wanna slit your wrists, okay? But boy, they make beautiful quilts, just beautiful. And then speaking of monochromatic, we talked about neutrals the other day. So again, if you're gonna work with neutrals, go for different size and scale of print, and it too needs white in it. I mean, this is pretty, but this is smashing, and it's because of the white. And again, different size and scale of print. Solids, I believe we spoke about briefly, same sort of thing. <clears throat> Here, oh, I think I should not be showing this one. 
yeah, let me do this one first. I have lights in here. This, this, it almost pained me to spend money on because who wants that light color, whatever. When I think of solid quilts, I think of Amish, I think of vibrant and all of that. Now, if I go like this and take that out, what's the matter, John? I take this out, you can see how it goes flat. Put those in, the thing pops. So this one, I thought, well, I've got the lights in. Why not add cherries? Why not add stripes? How can I push it? Then another thing is to think of, this is getting out there and I wouldn't do it for this quilt, but I just wanna wrap this up a little bit with a bow. This is you think of a time or a place in your life and just pull fabrics from that memory. So this memory is from Twain Heart, California, Strawberry Lake, we call it here. And what I remember as a child was the blue water. It was a small lake, it was perfect for little girls. And then there was sand. Now I doubt you'd find seashells there, but what the heck. And there was dirt everywhere. I don't know how my mother stood it because she was a clean freak, but because we're camping, dirt is everywhere. The green pine trees and the blue, blue skies. This came together beautifully just by a memory. Scrap is fun. And I think at some point I'm going to do a whole lesson on scrap quilts for you. Um, but it's fun. It's a little bit scary. But look what's going on here. You've got light, medium, dark. You've got different size and scale of print and so forth. But the other thing you might want to do is get a fabric that you go, how in the world did you end up in my stash? Okay. This was given to me a hundred years ago by Joyce Lytle. And she said, well, you wrote the first book, Quilts for Fabric Lovers. What do I do with this fabric? And I thought, well, if you have an RV, I think about making curtains out of it or something. But um, from this sample, I made this. I would have never, ever put this together without this as my guide. Now, the thing that's crazy is that this just as well could be a contemporary piece now because to me it has Kaif or Valerie written all over it. So what's old is new. So now... Just for a test. Yeah. That camera's fuzzy. Uh-huh. Can you lean that one down to see? Oh, John says his camera's... No, I really... I can't, I can't. I can't go through the whole thing again, John. No, no, no. Okay. I've got... Again, we are a professional operation here, and don't you guys forget it. So I want to show you um, this, this color wheel. The color wheel is your friend. In college, I, we'd have to paint it, and I just wanted to cry because I had a hard time seeing the undercolor of colors. Well, this is one that Joan Wolfram has put out, and what I use a color wheel for are just basically three different things. <coughs> and again, excuse me that we're going to run a little bit late. I use it for fabric put-togethers. So let's say I pick up a fabric that is yellow and I don't know what to put with it. Well, I can go directly across the wheel and it goes over here to blues. And this is what you call complementary. It is a classic combination. It's a really good solid dinner, like steak, like salmon, like Thanksgiving. It is solid, okay? It will work every single time. You simply look across the wheel, and let's see, and you put these together, okay, these colors, all right? Next is tertiary or triangle or triad. That is when you put a fake triangle on your wheel. So like, let's say I go here, I go here, and I go down here. Tertiary gives you a super pop. You don't always have to play with all three, but you can definitely use this if you want something to really stand out. So like for instance, this little sample here, yellow is tertiary to blue. And look at the pop that that gives it. It's fabulous. The last is analog, oh, tertiary I say is like a real good Mexican meal or Cajun or something like that. Next is analogous. It's when you take your arm and you swing it like this on the color wheel. That's like chicken soup for the soul. It's when you just pick one area and you say work in there or you work in there. It's very, it's, it's just, 
feels good. Now again, when you're working with these colors, you need light, medium, dark. So you have complementary, cross the wheel, you have triangle, tertiary, analogous, okay? Those are different ways to use the wheel. I love this wheel, it's a good one. So it's time. I'm gonna see if I can, as John just suggested, get my camera bent over. Mm, no, I can't. Yes, I can. Can you see it, John? Okay, so the unveiling right now. It's a big deal, you guys, when I, when I do this. I bless it first. I bless my fabric. I need a drum roll. What I'm going to do now <clears throat> is I'm going to put them in piles. This does not have a huge color of light, medium, and dark. You've got this one's kind of dark, this one's kind of dark, this one's a little bit dark. Here are your lights. Basically, there's only two lights in this collection. I'm going to need more than that, or I'm going to want more than that. So what I'll do then is I will just start piling this up. This could maybe, maybe I'll have two light piles. Maybe that's what I'm going to do. Whoops, I got to pull it this way off the table. Okay, maybe I'll have two, these two lights. Gosh, I love this. All right, here we go here. Now I'm going to, I'm going to put this down here in the darks. All right, for sure this dark. Here's the focus fabric. I'm going to probably put it there. The darks. Here we go. You can see this, right, everybody? Okay, John said so, yes. So let's see. Hmm. I'm not, I don't care about what the colors are. I think I'm going to do this one. Now, if you really have a hard time doing this, and I'm going to have you sort your fabrics into colors, you guys. I mean, into light, medium, darks. So if you have a hard time seeing light, medium, and dark, what you're going to do is you're going to get your camera you're going to snap a picture and then put it on black and white and you'll be able to see what's going on. All right. Now there, there we go. Okay, I want more lights. So I went to my stash and I found this one. I found this one. And it's amazing. These even have like the gray in it that this has. And I found this one. Oh, this is one that's in the collection. I will I will add these on in. So feel free when you have a collection of fabric to add in. Don't worry about it and and just go see what you have that you can play with, all right? This is actually a pretty good bundle. If I were designing it, I would have wanted to have two more of these gray things in. But hey, I bought it. So there you go, all right? Now comes the big to wash or pre-wash this weekend? I don't. Now, I have had quilts run on me, and that just is a thrill in itself. And I use Centhropol to get it out. And so um, I don't, and the reason I don't, well, no, let me say, if I'm making a baby quilt, I do, okay? But when I'm making a quilt, that's gonna be for publication or something, I don't, because I want it pristine. But I will tell you, fabric is dirty. It is a very, very dirty product. I was making 10 quilts in a couple months, way back in the day, and I found myself wheezing, and it was from all the crap that's in the fabric. So, you know, probably you would wanna pre-wash, but that's something you can do this weekend. You can pull out your fabrics and get your little bundles and put them in light, medium, and dark. You can also go watch the show 2101 with Joan Wolfram. She's the one that invented the color wheel. Remember, we've got the 1995 for six months right now. It's our quarantine special. She is much more sophisticated with her color choices than, than I am. And I and I and she just is, okay? So you might wanna check that out to that particular show. So uh, we will on Monday, don't cut into anything, okay? I kind of am trying to get an approach on how we're gonna do this because there is not this much of the light 
And in my book, I would put that up here, you know, in, in this background here. So don't cut into anything, right? We'll make the background first and then we'll do a couple easy blocks or maybe one hard block. I don't know. Depends. So again, you can, um, where do we get the fabric bundles with the shutdown? Well, you can't. <laughs> You, we sold them at thequiltshow.com. We still might have some. We have several, well, I don't know how many bundles we have left now, um, but just go pull from your stash. You can go to thequiltshow.com, see what we have left in the store if you want. Uh, some stores, uh, some quilt shops are doing little private, if you call them, maybe you can get in and get a little private tour of the store or something, or go celebrate your stash. I mean, good grief, we, most of us have stashes. I was just showing what I think of when I buy a stash. And I'm going to tell you something real deal. It's, it's really a big deal when I take that bundle off. Maybe I will wear this today. I don't know. Guys, I'm getting really, really bored. <laughs> I remember when Gwen Marston did this. Oh, geez, Louise. So we will see you Monday. You can go print. You can go print your... Uh, <laughs> ridiculous. You can go print off your um, pattern. It's $14.95 at TQS. The pattern at, on the website now is correct. And for those of you that got goofed up instructions, Kristen will take care of you. She is the responsible one. So, hey, have a great day. We only went 10 late. Sorry about that, but there were a lot of things that were going on today. Have a great weekend and go dig into your fabric. It will make you happy. See ya.